At our facility, we have a multidisciplinary team that interacts with these patients. So our oncologist or attending obviously does the, the initial prescribing, the diagnosis, um, the plan of care. Um, our APPs, either our NP or our PA, then typically do the follow-up visits. We try to do a um, one-to-one -one or a two-to-one kind of appointment scheduling. So they see the oncologist, APP oncologist, or oncologist, APP, APP oncologist. Um, just making sure that we're really able to follow up on the patient appropriately. Our nurses are very involved, especially from a triage perspective and a side effect management perspective. Um, and then the pharmacists on the team, we do, we review the initial prescription before it goes off to the pharmacy. Um, we actually are the ones that release that, that prescription once the physician has signed off on it. And we've checked any drug interactions, um, inappropriate dosing for uh, liver and or renal functions. Um, and then we do the initial education visit with the patient and really go through all of the side effects um, and management strategies for the patient while they're at home. Some of the best practices that we found within our practice specifically is um, establishing adherence and toxicity monitoring for patients. So we have been able to work with our electronic medical record team to set up um, alerts within the system so that every time a patient comes into the clinic, they actually get a pop-up, um, the medical assistant when they're rooming the patient, telling them that they're on an oral chemotherapy agent and they need to seek a nurse to really be able to do an adherence and toxicity assessment with that patient. Same idea like you think of in the infusion center, right? The patient comes in, you're gonna ask them how they're feeling, you're gonna ask them what side effects, what symptoms they're having um, before you give them more IV therapy. We kind of took the same approach with oral therapies just in the doctor's office instead of in the infusion center. We also have a trigger built into the medical record uh, about 10 days after the medication is released um, it's for the nurses to call the patient and check on, make sure that they've got the medication, ask how they're doing, if they're taking it, if they're having any side effects already, um, and really to do some follow-up uh, re-education and enforcement of what was uh, initially taught in the education visits. So those are some of the things that I think um, are really important to help keep patients on therapy, that early identification of side effects um, and early management of side effects. Uh, regardless of how many times in an education visit we tell patients, if you're having X issue, call us, it never fails that they don't call us. Um, and so that initial kind of one week trigger, um, we gave the 10 day uh, lead time to be able to get the medication from the pharmacy um, for the mailing or prior authorization, whatever it may be. Um, and so really a kind of a one week follow up phone call. And then we do try to get these patients in for a visit about a week to two weeks, depending on the medication after they start therapy. Um, but really we use that initial phone call as that first touch point to identify any issues early and then hopefully determine if we need to get a patient in even sooner or if we're having trouble getting the medication. So we've assumed the patient has started on drug, but really they can't afford the copay and they haven't called to tell us that and the pharmacy hasn't told us for whatever reason. And so we're able to identify some of those issues earlier on than in three months or two months or a month or whatever it is when the patient finally comes back to clinic and they say, oh, you know, how have you been doing on your medication the past three months? Oh, I haven't started it, um, which is, you know, never a great office visit. Um, things that I think are challenges though are um, really the management of these medications in general. So all of this stuff that we've talked about is a lot of man hours. Um, it takes a lot of work and a lot of staff um, and it's a completely different way of thinking. You know, in the IV room, you're in the infusion room, the patient's right in front of you. You can do all of this while you're doing all of the other things you need to do to hook them up to the IV. This is a completely separate thing um, and you have to rely on calling the patient, hoping that they answer and if they don't, that they call you back or you have to continue those follow-up phone calls. And so all of that can be time consuming. Um, and that's probably one of the issues that we hear the most from staff is that all of this takes a lot of time. Um, and we try to script it in a way that this is the best thing for patient safety. It's the best thing for patient care. Um, and really trying to remind them of all of the times that they've identified something because of these triggers. Um, and that usually gets them to kind of refocus on why we're doing it and why it's so important. Um, but it all takes a lot of time and it takes a lot of staff and manpower. So after we've done the education visit, we continue to support the nurses um, with any of those follow-up phone calls. Um, my partner and I try to be the one that makes those phone calls, um, but with the number of, of plans uh, that are entered every day and the number of patients we have on oral therapy, sometimes it's hard to, to do that. And so we really do rely on that 
multidisciplinary um, nursing and pharmacy team approach to help manage these patients. Uh, we also support patients when they come back for those follow-up visits. We'll do some of those adherence and toxicity checks in the office. Um, and if a patient is having issues, the providers will often pull us in to do re-education or help with supportive care management. Um, you know, the patient's tried X, it's not working, what else can I do? So we do um, more kind of behind the scenes, I would say, in that kind of follow-up management strategy, depending on the patient. If the patient's doing really well, um, we're definitely more behind the scenes. If the patient is having issues, then we'll, we'll have a lot more face time with the patients. Um, I think if I had all of the time in the world, I would see every single one of these patients every time they come in um, and really help focus on all of those um, nuances or issues that they're having um, to really help the patient optimize their therapy. Um, but there's only so many hours in the day, unfortunately. <laughs>